David Archer. Can only wonder what might have been. And you know he'd be back in this game if he could. No question about it. So again, Kemp goes to work. Sidearms it to Marcus Dowdell. He's hit hard. Looked like D. Wayne Knight coming in along with Bo Lewis. Gain will be five yards. The difference momentum will make. Now it's the defense for the BC Lions that's flying around. That was a gang tackle. First of all, Kemp's not going to have a whole lot of time to throw this ball. Like, he has to pull it down because he's got a guy in his face. Once he gets it off, watch the guys. There's one, two, three, four. It's like a team meeting over at Dadell. Now the BC Lions are flying around. Lewis low. Knight high. Points from turnovers wow. so far, and that tells the tale. Kemp with time. Into traffic. Bounced off Shannon Myers. It was nearly picked off again by Dale Joseph. Well, Shannon Myers didn't see the ball coming. That ball bounced off his shoulder pads. He was busy fighting down the field to try and get open. Because he was occupied by the defensive backs, it was Picasso Nelson and Dale Joseph on the coverage. By the time he turned around to get up, he couldn't get his hands up in time, and it bounced off his shoulder pads. And so the Eskimos will punt again in the second half of his seven-field series with Jimmy Kemp at the helm. Fleming with a nice high sky hook. Taken by Dave Donaldson, and then he's railed back to his 40s. There's a flag on the play, and it looks like it'll be no yards. And so, the Lions lead. Back at Edmonton, the Lions lead by a converted touchdown, and they have great field position after Trent Brown was called for no yards. Yeah, Trent Brown is going to get called. He's right there. He gets tripped by Derek Lewis, goes down, and is in the five-yard neutral zone when Dave Donaldson catches that football. He got the late hit on Damon Allen early. That was a bad penalty, but that was a penalty he really couldn't help. First down, ball at the 53 of Edmonton. Handoff underneath to Juan Johnson. And the Eskimos scouted that play. Well, this is where you want a running game. You have a lead late midway through the fourth quarter. You want to be able to run the football, take time off the clock, and put a couple first downs together. And that was the dynamite play, whatever that is. <laughs> John Huffnagel at the controls of this BC offense. A weekend warrior coming in on weekends from New Jersey to call the shots. Damon Allen, pump fake, going deep down the far sideline. Eddie Brown's open and he's got it! Touchdown, but there's a flag on the play. And Leroy Blue says it's coming back for holding. Here's the call from Ken Lazarick. Holding, BC, number 64, second down repeat. Mo Elowanibi was working on Leroy Blue on the play. Leroy Blue was the first guy to signal that there was a holding call. Mo Elowanibi is the tackle right there. He's working on Leroy Blue to the outside, and oh, it's yeah. a takedown. Is it ever? And that snuffs out a 51-yard touchdown pass to Eddie Brown, which may have sealed this game. A break for the Eskimos. They'll move the ball back inside BC territory to their 49. Second down repeat. Wants to go deep again. Ron Harris is open. He's got it! He drops it! It's no good! No! He's complaining that he had it and it, it hit the ground and the ground made him fumble. The ground cannot make you fumble the football. Rod Harris wanted to make the complaint that he had the ball in the air. Here's another look at it. Rod Harris has the ball there. Now does the ground pop it out? Yes, it does. When he hits the ground, that ball pops out. He has possession when he's 20 and in the three, air. 20 and three. And so two deep strikes by the Lions are wiped out. 
Another missed call by the official hurts the BC Lions. Pasaglia will punt. Big rush. Just gets it off to the sidelines. The Gizmo will get his hands on to the 25. Twist. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Dave Donaldson will bring him down right in his tracks. I know you're pitching. I know you're coming. So two big, deep plays. Wiped out by a penalty and a questionable call. Take another look at this. Now, he is in the air. Rod Harris. Greg Mons wants to go back to that Rod Harris catch and ask, did he not have possession? Harris looked like he had the ball stuck in his gloves and then lost it as he hit the field. Play action pass now. Kemp wanted to go deep. It's flushed out of the pocket. Pursuit now from Benefield. Gets away from him and Canter and then slides out of bounds. This is what Jimmy Kemp's going to have to do. He's going to have to move the pocket around. He hasn't had success as a drop back passer. Rod Harris still can't believe he didn't get that catch. Here it is again. He has possession right now. Hits the ground, and the ball comes out. That could have been a fumble, not an incompleted pass. Exactly. But Harris will not get it. Second and short. Three yards as Johnny Scott glares at the Eskimo offense. Shotgun formation for Kemp. He'll pass into the middle. Shannon Myers has it in traffic. What a gutsy catch. And a first down for the Eskimos. It looks like if the Eskimos are going to come back, it's going to have to be Jimmy Kemp. 18 yards on the pass from Kemp to Myers. This is a big catch for Shannon Myers. When you consider that he was knocked out of the football game on a hit from Steve Muhammad, regrouped, got back in the game, and then went hard into the middle and catch the football. I mean, that takes a tremendous amount of courage at the best of times. Two catches since that horrible accident, that horrible collision for Myers for 27 yards. Play action, bootleg. They're waiting for him. And Jimmy Kemp fumbles. Herman Smith was not buying the play action no by Jimmy Kemp. Herminator number 91. A late cut from Dallas in September. Waiting for Kemp along with Benefield. Disciplined football from Herman Smith to keep his responsibility with it, which is contained. Stay upfield. Kemp turns around, has nowhere to go. And luckily, Troy Mills was there to recover that fumble. Second down. No, no. And long. Kent. Big rush. Steps up to the play. Dumps it off to Mills across center field. But flags are down. The ball's in midfield. Gain is 13. About five short of the first down marker. Well, Johnny Scott ended up face down on the grass. I believe he was working on. Bruce Pete. Now, I'm not saying that's the call, but Johnny Scott is just holding Edmonton, number 62, second down repeater. Okay, that is the call. <laughs> Bruce Pete gets the call. Yeah, he, he was working on Johnny Scott, and, and he did the watch 72 go right up the field here. Bruce Pete gets beat to the outside, so he pulls him down, puts him right on his face. Good call by the official. And so the line of scrimmage moves all the way back to the 32-yard line. Second down and 28 for Jimmy Kemp and the Eskimos. Big push from the Shark Club. Kemp over the middle to Don Blair, who finally factors into this football game. But he'll be shy of the first down by six, nearly seven yards, a 21-yard catch. So they'll be seven short. It's it's short of the first down, but it's a big play for the Edmonton Eskimos because it's going to be a whole bunch of field position after they punt the football. Don Blair with his third catch of the game, now with 46 yards. Case Stevenson's number one quarterback, David Archer, is on the sidelines with an injured passing hand. Fleming to punt. Dave Donaldson chasing it, but it'll bounce out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. 
And so the Lions offense comes on the field as Fleming is not too happy with his production on that punt. Has been prolific. Two touchdown passes, another call back, and he's run for one. David Archer has been frustrated, generating 24 points in the first half, and that not being able to come back after halftime with an injured passing hand. Jimmy Kemp has mustered but two points in the second half for Edmonton. Play action. Good fake. Allen going deep to Rod Harris. It's tipped and intercepted. Dwayne Stewart has the ball and returns it deep with their flags on the play. Rick sorting out the call. His flags flew on that play. The Ed Legal block, Edmonton, number 40, first down Edmonton. Well, a break for the Eskimos to get the pick, but then they shoot themselves in the foot. As good to get called on the legal block, and the ball moves back to the 52 of BC. They've taken advantage. BC has of Dwayne Stewart in coverage. Here's the play. David Allen throws it deep to Rod Harris, and it's Dwayne Stewart that comes back, gets his hands on it, deflects it in the air, and then comes up with the interception. Benny Goods down the field is going to get the illegal block in the back on Brett Anderson. Play action. Kemp to the sidelines and completes a Dowdell for a first down. Kemp, it seems, buoyed by the defense. A 19-yard pass reception to Dowdell. It's a good outcut, a good break to the out. Look to the inside and then slide to the open area to the outside. Derek Lewis had to play inside position and is too late getting out there. First down. Edmonton at the BC 35. Pitch pass to Don Blair. He's got some blocks across the 30 and driven out of bounds by Steve Muhammad, the rookie. Johnny Scott is slow getting up, and they may have to come out for him. Now, with Dave Chaters out of the football game, Johnny Scott is holding his right hand. He may have a, the way they're looking at it right now, it may be a dislocation. They're trying to put it back in place. Oh, those are painful. Now, this is a situation for the BC Lions. With Dave Chaters out of the ball game, Johnny Scott now has to leave for at least three plays. That means that their only opportunity now is to bring Nick Richards, who was injured early and is playing hurt. He has to come up and play on the defensive line because they don't have anybody else. So now it'll be Nick Richards, Benefield, Noah Cantor and Herman Smith up front. Cantor and Richards, two Canadians now coming in to fill the center of that Shark Club with the loss of Chaters and Scott, the two most deadly members of that BC defensive line. Second down and three. Mills has the ball and he has a first down. Oh uh, yeah, run right at it. I mean, that's what you're going to do if you're Edmonton's offense right now. You are going to run right at the replacement. Nick Richards weighs 240 pounds, but is a linebacker playing beside Noah Canner in the middle, and that's right where you're going to run the football. Mills with 122 yards on the ground, and they're still working on big Johnny Scott on the BC defense. They need him back. First down. The handoff to Mills, and he's dropped by the middle linebacker, Armstrong. Now, one way that the BC defense can adjust is to try and send pressure. Send the linebackers, Antonio Armstrong, Picasso Nelson. Try and cancel gaps. But if you do that, you're taking a chance because you're one-on-one -on -one in coverage in the back end. And that's when you can get beat for that one big one over the top. Edmonton threatening on offense for the first time in the second half. Under backup, Jimmy Kemp. 4.20 to go in the football game. They're down by a converted touchdown. Second and six, Kemp. Air 
throws it to the end zone. He's got it! Touchdown, Brian Wiggins! Wiggins with post coverage. But Rodgers and Joseph comes down with the ball. The Commonwealth comes alive for the Eskimos. Go back to the ground after losing the lead. They come out firing and they're running the football. Good blocks at the point of attack. Drummond bounces to the outside and it's Willie Pless who has to try and pull him down. 3.06 and counting left to play in the West semifinal regulation time. It's all tied at 33. Again, the give to Drummond and he's stuffed. The game will be short. Johnny Scott injured and a bystander in a terrific West Semi. The Commonwealth Stadium crowd of 26,000 standing for the defense, just like the old days when Kepley ruled. Second down and seven. as he comes up behind the center so that the offense can hear his cadence. Back to pass. Time. Right down the middle and nearly picked off again. Willie Pless very close to that one. Eddie Brown, the intended receiver, and it's a punting situation for BC with 2.42 to go. Well, the Edmonton Eskimos are going to get the football back. 
but they very nearly came up with a huge interception because if Willie Pless catches that one, he is still running. Wiggins in the gizmo back as Mons looks on. The interim head coach in his first ever playoff game as the head man in the CFL. Basaglia will angle it to the sideline. The gizmo will get it on the run over the 30, to the 35, and then he runs into traffic but doesn't go down. An inspired effort from the Gizmo on a short 28-yard punt from Pasaglia. Let's go down to the sidelines, and here's Caroline Corey. Yes, Mark, defensive lineman Johnny Scott has a dislocated pinky. They have put it back in, and he is expected to step on the field now. He is on the field as you speak. You talk about Warriors. You look at that jersey. Look at that guy. The blood all over his pants. Blood all over his jersey. Dislocated finger. They put it back in place. And he's lining up for the next play. A member of the Shark Club. They smell blood. Kemp with the shotgun. Hands off. Mills knocked off his feet. Oh, man. Guess who makes the tackle? Johnny Scott. Unbelievable. With one arm. Okay, five. I mean, you talk about the heart and soul of your football team. Johnny Scott gets his finger put back on, gets back in the game, and knocks down Troy Mills on a running play with one arm. 265 pounds. The big man from Austin, Texas, is back in the game. Bloodied and injured, but still playing. Here's Kent. It's tipped at the line. Noah Catter, the Canadian backup. The, the, the fans want to pass interference, but when the ball is tipped, it's waved off. Bo Lewis did make contact, but it would be waved off because the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage by Noah Cantor. This is the throw. Noah Cantor just gets a fingertip on it. Once it's tipped, you can go ahead and make contact downfield. So Derek Lewis is going to make contact on Marcus Dodell, and it's a good no call by the official. I got Noah Jack, Cantor, a perennial backup, a special teams man, filling in for the injured Dave Chaters in a big way. Here's Fleming's kick. High spiral coming down to Rod Harris at the 28 sidesteps the first pursuit and is dropped at about the 35-yard line. And that's where the BC Lions will scrimmage after a 42-yard skyhook from Sean Fleming. When you want to play professional football, everything you do is geared to this moment. You lift weights, all the work you do in the offseason, all the running and all the lifting weights, all the work through the regular season, playing injured, it all comes down to this. And all David Archer can do is stand and watch. His passing hand injured. Damon Allen in his 15th CFL playoff game. He's got the savvy and experience. 1.55 to go in the game. He's going to try and run, but he's dropped. They dropped Robert Brown into coverage. Really changed things up. Something Damon Allen has not seen all game. 